the kind of damage that has been done to the system it will take a superman to take it department by department and with a very precise directive supervision and compliance in, in, in terms of those that are leading the country in terms of factoring in the feelings of average Niger, that is arrogance that have enveloped the system and that is why you have the resistance and that is why you see people have lost their sense of humanity you see somebody picking a child slaughtering the child cutting the child into pieces in all over you see people turning into carnivorous uh, distance all over the country not just in one particular region of the country it's all over the country people are using human parts you know to take to spiritual people for money purposes and there is no deterrence even if they are deterrent the deterrent is very weak so there's no way people cannot take laws into their hands any leadership that like capacity to create deterrence the country will suffer from. terrible kind of situation we find ourselves in the fourth one is that in 1999 when we were forming this uh, pdp the quintessential founders of the pdp from g7 to g18 to g34 are career politicians they forfeited their ideological differences and decided to build a platform that can provide a base for every Nigeria, irrespective of tribe or religion. And that is why, if you look at the names of the G7 that started this meeting in late Elijah Obaka Rimi's house in Kaduna, the first person that was called is Malang Adamuchroma, Iroda Musa, Sule Lamido, and others. They started the G7, from G7 to G18, G18 to G34. And that's when they decided it should be a national platform that will accommodate Nigerians, whether you are minority or you are minority, irrespective of your tribe or sex um, and what have you. And that works. That was how PDP and the other party was registered. You know, before the whole thing was, was, was mixed up, the founding fathers left the party. So the career politicians were locked out. Those elements that have been patronizing the military institutions who have done a lot of contract, had money, hijacked the system. And that is why within a short period of time you see imposition in PDP, rascality, recklessness in the affairs of the party. Once your name is there as a candidate, you can go and sleep like you have won the election because you have the ticket of PDP. That what led to the defeat of the PDP because it was over abused. And um, people migrated. There was internal protest that led to the migration into APC. It was a PDP protest and migration that led to the election of Buhari. It wasn't that APC have more voters than PDP. We all were concerned with race issues. PDP be remorseful, adjust their program, adjust their behavior. It didn't work. All of us left the party. I was a founding member. So, you know, all these things and, and, and lack, lack of, lack of uh, reward system fundamentally also affected the whole system. There's no leadership training uh, center for the younger ones to be trained in an act of leadership. So street people came in and hijacked the system that have no idea what it takes over for someone who traveled and traversed the entire country and understands the needs, uh, the, 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 the problems of the people at the lower community. And that's why if you go to every community, you find that there's absence of governance, both from the state, the federal, and local government. There's no presence of government in most of the communities. So why would the communities bother about casting votes, casting uh, going into elections? So, Sir, so we've talked about PDP. Is APC walking the same shoe that PDP walked? And what's the solution your party is bringing? APC have not learned anything from the PDP mistake. In fact, they have gone worse. If they have learned from the PDP mistake. They wouldn't have gone into this crisis they have gone. Even convention is becoming an issue. They are now on their eight years at the helm of affairs. PDP ruled for 16 years. I thought they have generated a lot of statistics that give them a clear court idea why PDP lost election. I was among the last committee that were constituted to review why PDP lost election and to recommend the way forward. And we did that under the chairmanship of Jerry Ghana. I was stretched into three committees. PDP have the best cons the best document any party can, can look for. But it was approved by NWC by NEC 
and it was agreed that it will be implemented at the convention. The convention became the worst convention a PDP ever had, the last convention. And that is why we left the party. We felt that our vision, our future is no longer secured by, by the party. And uh, if you have followed my activities, I've been talking about PDP, I've been making image laundering for the PDP free of charge. They have never given me any money, but it's because I was part of the formation and the building of the party. So I owe the party, I owe the country to contribute my quota to the development of democracy. And I'm happy I did my best. It is a record that I did my best for the party. I stood for the party, but people very on democratic element, democratic element have hijacked PDP. So there's nothing apart from imposition, rascality, abuse, vulgarism that have enveloped both PDP and APC. You will have spokesmen of government talking to citizens with arrogance. There's no politeness. There's no understanding that it is a government of the people, by the people and for the people. So how do you define that? How do you explain that? Every day we are saying that we are experimenting. For how long can we keep on experimenting? 16 years plus 8 years, how many years would it give you? Are we still experimenting? In terms of a baby that you gave birth to, she might have delivered also another children. So a baby that have grown up, conceived, delivered, is she still experimenting? Can we explain this? Can Nigeria accept this explanation? So what Nigerians are looking for is something practical, to see it practically being done. So Nigeria is like an aircraft, where all Nigerians are inside the aircraft. But the aircraft required a new engine that can uplift the country from the ground. So the country can start moving on. So far, we are all inside the aircraft. The aircraft engine is weak. It cannot take off. So I hope and our expectation, the person that is likely to succeed President Buhari have all these qualities, have all this vision. He has the capacity to take Nigeria off the ground and perhaps close to the cruising level, if not to the cruising level. So in the line, what does Social Democratic Party have for Nigerians? Different what, from what I, I, I don't know if you read our constitution and our manifesto. First and foremost, we cannot manufacture what is not available. You have to rejiggle the government structures that is available. You have to reprioritize government programs, policies and programs. You have to make sure that citizens are carried along. So that is how uh, SDP is positioning itself. We have good experience, sufficient experience, knowledge of the country, feeling of the people, pulse of the people. So it's easy if we produce leadership under very strict guidance in compliance with the party manifestos, policies and programs, would not allow anybody who is at the helm of affairs to disrupt the party by ignoring the uh, manifestos of the party and initiating his own programs. After all, every manifesto of the political party is in line with the visions and development of Nigeria master plan. It is not as if the party's manifestos are about creating an island somewhere and abandoning the larger portion of the country. So it's all about making the country better, upgrading the standard of living of Nigeria, put Nigeria on the world stage. Is a president who understands the dynamics of the global economy, political uh, science, uh, educational system, technological uh, drive that is changing the whole world into science and technology. We are not even talking about that in Nigeria. I don't know where last I had people talking about uh, this thing, despite the fact that we launched uh, this into the space, even though it's, uh, it's very controversial. But what I'm saying is that if governments spend trillions or billions of naira in a project and you cannot see a visible impact, how do you describe that? The, 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 the Minister of Poverty Alleviation during the COVID, we were all stuck at home for months and we learned that there's a, a poverty alleviation package for Nigerians. I live in Abuja in Metama. Nobody ever called me and asked me, how am I feeding my family? But I heard that millions of people benefited from it. Nobody in my relation or friends told me he has benefited from it. How do you explain that? Can't government justify this? Can't they publish lists of the beneficiaries to make sure they are on the same page with Nigerians? This is how you create distrust between government and the citizens. And do you blame the citizens? The answer is no. Who do you blame is the government? 
because the government sworn to protect, to provide for the citizens of Nigeria.